Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch and today we are going to talk about something that is very rarely covered on this channel and that is typeface. Yes, today we are talking about fonts. Um, actually, specifically a font. Now, if you've never heard of it, JetBrains. JetBrains is the makers of a number of different products from uh, IntelliJ Idea to ReSharper to Sea Lion to WebStorm to PHP Storm to PyCharm, you name it, they make an IDE for just about every programming language. And they also make a programming language called Kotlin. But apparently for the last couple of years, they've also been working on a font. And fonts aren't normally something that you cover on a game development channel, but this one is kind of a special font. This is a typeface developed for developers. So that's why we are looking at it. It is the unfortunately named Mono. By the way, people, if you are going to release a product into the tech world, do not use a generic name like that. That is just infuriatingly stupid. Now, it wouldn't bother me. I get it, mono, mono space, or whatever. But there's already a programming language called mono. There's a thousand types named mono. Come on. New name. New name, people. But anyways, mono is from JetBrains. It's actually called JetBrains Mono, so finding it isn't really that difficult. And here we are. You can actually see it in action. There's ligatures going on, so instead of having the dat, uh, the, the minus uh, greater than sign, you can actually have it as a single symbol. And you can see it in various different programming languages. Now, it's not going to change the world. It is just a font, but it's a pretty good font from my experiences so far. So it's available right now in all of the the modern IDE. So if you grab a version, it's a default font since 2020.1 versions, and I believe it's available in all of them as an option after 2019.3 versions. So if you're using a JetBrains IDE, it is already installed for you. If you are not using a JetBrains IDE, I will show you how you can go about installing it on Windows anyways. But first, let's talk about why this is a special font. So you see, reason number one, increased height for a better reading experience. By the way, this is all their words, not mine. So um, all I have to go by is my opinion from using it. Uh, adapted to reading source code. Uh, 138 code specific ligatures. We'll get to the ligatures in a minute. Uh, supports 143 different languages. Uh, weights with matching italics. So the, the font family is actually, I think there's eight fonts that compose it. Uh, it's free and open source, which is always kind of nice to see. Uh, so increased letter heights for better reading experience. You can see JetBrains Mono versus uh, Fira Code, Consolas, and Source Code fonts as it stands right now. Um, you can see a direct comparison here. So here's Mono at 13 um, pix uh, versus Consolas and it's not going to really change the world, but you can see it's actually a bigger font and I actually, I do find it more readable. Another thing again is the ligature. So watch right here. So we go from that to a single symbol. Now that is optional, uh, but it does, I actually do find the JetBrains Mono version more readable in just about every case. But then again, I'm also getting older and my eyes aren't as great as they used to be. So I like the slightly more space for per each character. Maybe you don't. Um, code specific eye movements. So the shape of ovals approach that of rectangular symbols. This makes the whole pattern of the text more clear cut. The outer sides of the ovals ensure that there are no additional obstructions for your eyes as they scan the text vertically. Um, so it's a code, it's a text optimized for reading of code, um, which is kind of nice to see. Uh, functional construction, JetBrains mono typeface forms are simple and free from unnecessary details. Rendered in small sizes, the text looks crisper. Uh, easier the forms, the faster the eye perceives them, and the less effort the brain needs to process them. And I get this, actually. So your U is literally just a root. There's no down stick. There's no tapering off there. And again, I do actually like that better. Now, from an aesthetics point of view, some of these other fonts may look better, but that might take your brain longer to actually go ahead and read them. Like this G is just way overdone. Where's that one? I can work with that. I'm actually a little surprised that there is as much indentation there, but I guess they also have to distinguish it from a nine, but uh, they're kind of breaking their own rules, it seems there. Uh, very distinctive symbols. This is the nicest one, other than it makes it look like googly eyes. Uh, zeros have a clearly defined dot, and it's just a dot. It's not a dash through it. I do find that easier to read, although it does look like a smiley face. Uh, the one, the L, and the I are all very easy to distinguish. And if you're used to quoting numbers, you will find this very useful. So if you're tagging something as a 111 long, you can tell the difference between a 1 and a, an L very, very easily, and a 1 and an I very, very easily. Uh, comma shapes differ from that of the period, making them easier to tell apart at small sizes. Cut strokes, radically cut at the end of the stroke fits the pixel grid better and gives the typeface a stricter and more tech personality. 
Uh, okay. Uh, italics, key to a good italics is fine tuning of the contrast between the upright and italic font. Typically, the angle is about 11 to 12 degrees. JetBrains uses a nine degree angle. This maintains the optimal contrast to minimize distraction and eye strain. Uh, only for the A, Y, and F is the construction taken from true type italic to slightly enhance the horizontal flow for the eyes. Ligatures, we talked about this earlier on. So you have ligatures, those are this form as opposed to that form. Uh, it does make your code uh, less noisy for sure because like, for example, with the arrow operator, you don't have that space in there. It doesn't look quite as hideous or you can just have the single arrow going on uh, to balance white space more efficiently by shifting the glyphs in, a certain, uh, in certain cases. So you can see like the, when there's brackets, it's, it's pushing them out a little bit more. Um, this one is a lot less pronounced than that one up there. And then we have uh, the various different fonts that are in this. So we've got a medium, a regular, uh, there's a couple of italics in there, a bold. Uh, we'll see that, here we go. So we got a regular, an italic, a medium, a medium italic, a bold, a bold italic, an extra bold and an extra bold italic. So you've got a pretty good swath of options there as far as this fonts go. And then you can see here, there are a quite a few different languages supported out of the box. Now, if you're interested in getting started, once again, the majority of their products already have it going on. Uh, but if you're on Windows platform and you wanna use this say in like Visual Studio Code, you can do so via the download font option. So just click that guy right there. It'll bring it down as a zip file. It's quite a small file. And then you've got a couple of options for how to install it. You can actually just open up the zip file, right click and say open. And then here you go. So then you would just do is do an install of the font like so and that will install the font in. Now notice the font name is JetBrains Mono. That's important actually. Uh, so that is one way to install it. The other way you can do it is basically select all of the fonts that you want to install. And in Windows type font settings like so. And then you can literally just drag and drop them into here. Now, unfortunately, it does not seem to work from a zip. So you gotta go ahead and extract those guys out to a folder, which is annoying, and then grab them from there and then drag them over to there. Uh, so those are your two ways of installing. This will install the multiple fonts and they should all be available now. So if we come down here and go to JetBrain, oh, okay. I don't ever install fonts this way. I always just use the uh, click and install. Uh, but you see here, we have the eight fonts now installed. So there is your option. And once again, it is important to note that the name of this is JetBrains Mono, not just Mono. So let's say you want to use this font in something like Visual Studio Code, which I conveniently have running and zoomed into the Max already. And then what you wanna do is head on down here to preferences and go into settings. Now there's something interesting I discovered here is to create these settings and you need to change the font. In this laptop, I had to do a restart. On the last laptop, I didn't, I just made the change. So I'm not sure what the diff deal is there, but what you want to do, all right, I'm spoiling things by jumping into it automatically there. You wanna go into settings, go to text editor, uh, then you go to uh, font right there and you'll see here it's consolas courier new mono space. But what we wanna do is just switch that out to JetBrains mono like so. And then if you want ligatures, you can have it so that, you know, again, dash greater than becomes a single arrow. You can turn that on if you so wish right there. And then we are done. Now in theory, this should set, but for some reason, as I mentioned earlier on, I have to do a restart in order to get it to work. So I'm going to do that. Visual Studio Code, let's fire that guy off again. All right, so here we are back. I have it now configured. Let's go ahead and create a new file. Uh, we'll mark this guy as C++, like so. And this is that. There you go. So there you can see with the new ligatures, the new font going on, let me just zoom that in. And the rest now kind of comes down to personal opinion. That bracket style might make some people want to vomit. Other people might find that much more readable. Again, the ligature thing is completely optional. You can turn that off to instead have it render like that minus the space if you so wish. Um, here we go. Brown Fox jumped. Oops, jumped over the lazy brown dog. Is that what it is? Anyways, you can see there is what the font looks like. Uh, brackets. So my var zero. So you see there the zero in there and a semicolon. Everything is quite well delineated. You've got good space to show your brackets. Your zero is very obvious. Uh, another one they, they were mentioning is I, capital I, 
lowercase l, capital L, all very clear distinguishment between them. Um, yeah, it's an interesting font. I'm gonna actually set this as my default. I'm gonna throw this in my console and use it and keep it in Visual Studio Code and a couple of other IDEs and see what I think of it. I do find it very, very readable though. So uh, I'll probably stick with it, but I can understand how it'll be polarizing. Some people really may dislike what's going on here. I'd love to hear your opinion down below. So uh, yeah, probably the last video talking about fonts on this channel for quite a while, but this is the first dedicated high resource programmer font that's been released in a little while. Let me know what you think and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye for now.